The safety is off. There's a round in the chamber. This is Armed Alabama. Sponsored by McCoy Outdoor Company. Mobile's hometown full-line outdoor sporting products and gear store. An interactive talk show discussing self-defense, product reviews, shooting tips, safety, and more. Your calls, comments, and texts welcome at 343-0106. Now, here are your hosts, retired judge and certified NRA instructor, Rusty Johnston, and certified NRA law enforcement instructor, Adam Strange. They're gonna pry these guns right out of my hands when they come to take them away. I believe in the rights that my fathers gave me when he signed the Constitution that day. No misguided president or crooked politician with a greasy pocket be spared. When the hardworking man gets tired of your cry, it's gonna rain right, beware. Good afternoon, this is your captain speaking with just a little flight information. Coming up on the left, we're going to be catching a glimpse of the Grand Canyon. On the right, you can be able to see the Hooper Dam in just a few minutes. We're flying at an altitude of 37,000 feet and our airspeed is 400 miles an hour. A couple little facts here. I'm packing a Colt King Cobra. That's a 357 caliber firearm with a black rubber grip and a six inch barrel. Also, the co-pilot is carrying a Kimber Custom Defense pistol with all the bells and whistles you'd expect from a custom gun of that kind with an alloy frame and bevel treatment on the entire gun. And our chief flight attendant, Roger, has a Ruger Bearcat 22 with a hand fluted cylinder. All three are capable of piercing body armor at a distance of up to 27 feet. And it can put a hole in human bone and flesh the size of the Grand Canyon, which, by the way, is coming up on the left-hand side of the plane, so just sit back and relax and enjoy the rest of the flight. Welcome to Armed Alabama. This is retired Circuit Judge Rusty Johnston, and that was a recent flight that I took to Southern California, and I thought that was a unique way that the captain had to explain kind of the security procedures. Very comforting, wasn't it? It sure, sure was comforting. For those of you that normally listen to Armed Alabama on Tuesday nights, that's at 7 p.m., we won't be on tonight because there is an Auburn basketball game, but if you've never heard the show, this is a chance for you to hear it, you know, at a time you would normally, we hope you'll listen to it every Tuesday night at 7, either here on FM Talk 1065 or on their website, uh, same thing, fmtalk1065.com, or on Facebook Live, where we're broadcasting right now, and that is uh, Armed Alabama Radio, FM Talk 1065. And if you like the channel uh, or the page, then you'll get a message when we give a live broadcast like this. Sometimes the live broadcasts are really good because we'll show some item. Uh, sometimes it's just you know a way to hear it if you're in another city. Uh, but you can also hear it on the station's website or on the www.armedalabama.com website. But we're just rebroadcasting what the station does. Armed Alabama is Alabama's only firearms-related uh, talk show that broadcasts in, from the state of Alabama. And we've had a great year. And matter of fact, this will be a third anniversary in March. It's hard, that's hard to believe. Uh, we talk about pistols, revolvers, shotguns, concealed carry, ammunition, training, and attacks on our sec on our Second Amendment right to protect ourselves and our family. Uh, just some breaking news: uh, as of a f- to this morning, the Supreme Court, U.S. Supreme Court, has granted certiorari in a case involving assault weapons, the assault weapon ban in Maryland. And uh, they haven't taken up any Second Amendment cases in a number of years. And you've got states doing all kind of crazy things. So they're going to hear that. And uh, we'll give you more on that in the future. Uh, But certiori is an appeal. It's where 
I'm not so sure they shouldn't get rid of it, but it's, the court can kind of pick the cases that it wants to hear, and apparently it picked that one. But by doing that, they can decide how much work they're going to do and how they're going to shape the law. Ooh, we don't want to. We don't want to handle that very controversial so, case. So, what is the issue in Maryland? The Maryland banned assault weapons as of a certain date. It was sometime last year. And that's a real broad definition. Well, it is. It? Your semi-automatic AR-15 is an assault weapon. Actually. I think it's any weapon or any firearm with a pistol grip and probably black. I can't remember the whole definition. But, you know, it's the problem is the Second Amendment, which we don't even need because, as Justice Scalia pointed out, and anybody would know, that uh, rights come first, then comes the government. Uh, you had the right to keep and bear arms as a free Englishman before this government was established. And that wasn't changed by the Second Amendment. When the Second Amendment was adopted, first of all, it only applied to the federal government. And it was, as Hamilton said, and I hate to quote him because I, I think he's a bad guy, but uh, why is it necessary to put something in the Constitution that says we can't do something when we don't have the power to do it? The Constitution was supposed to be a grant of specific powers, and if they weren't granted the powers, they didn't have the right to do it. But it didn't really uh, work work out that way. Well, Judge, I know it's early, but uh, if you had to make a prediction on this more conservative Supreme Court What's your prediction? Do you think they'll overrule the ban, or is it too simplistic? I would think they would overrule it, because what Heller told us, that was the kind of the premier case in 2008, is that uh, firearms that were unusual or dangerous, I mean, every, every weapon's dangerous, but unusual, they can be banned. Well, that's, uh, you know, uh, let's say a flamethrower. They're legal, but AR-15, probably outside of the specific Ruger 1022, is the most popular platform firearm in the country. So it's not unusual. It's quite very common. So uh, looks like we got a call. Yeah, let's uh, let's take that call. By the way, our number here is 251-343-0106. Call or text in. Comments, questions, love to take them. Good afternoon, Robert. You're on the radio. Hey, Robert. Judge Johnstone. Yeah, uh, what's up? It, it's a pleasure hearing you in the afternoons instead of later at night. I enjoy your show. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Robert, you need to get closer to your phone. Okay. Is that better? That's much, better. Much better. Or I can be Art Bell, the late Art Bell. Silence your radio or get a better phone. <laughs> Anyhow, he was go always go ahead. That's and fine. What's uh, up, Robert? Judge, I have a question. Yep. I'm a, I'm a senior citizen. I live by myself. I don't know a whole lot about guns, and I want to get a some type of pistol, whether like a nine millimeter automatic or a revolver. And I want you to give me some advice on maybe some some models that. Uh, and also, I, I need to tell you, I have some some minor arthritis in my hands. Okay. And can you tell me some some uh, products that would be good for me? Yeah. Well, let's let me ask you generally. What do you want to use the gun for? Is it going to stay in your home as home protection, or are you going to yeah. keep it in the car also, or carry it too? No, no. This is only for home. I carry in the car. Okay. Well, let me tell you what I would suggest. Rather than a pistol, I would suggest a pistol caliber carbine, which would fire, let's say, a nine millimeter, and uh, but you get no recoil from that uh, as opposed to a pistol. I mean, you know, you get some recoil. And plus with a pistol, well, with a carbine, you've got three or four points of contact as opposed to a pistol where, you know, you're holding it with one or two hands. And it's a lot more difficult to miss with the carbine. You can get one as cheap as a $299 uh, high point carbine, this 9 millimeter, uh, to a... Um, it's actually a pretty cool gun. It's the um, uh, Keltec Sub 2000, and it's it's probably about 350. Uh, you can get a Beretta Storm. I've got one of those. They're about maybe 650 or something like that. I would go with one of those. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're short too. They're, what you want to try to focus in on is get a carbine if you can. Is 
28 inches is the shortest allowable by law. So you want to get one from 28 to 32 inches if you can. You don't want to get, you know, that's the problem with a shotgun. A lot of shotguns, you know, are 38 inches long, 40 inches long, and wanting to get through a doorway besides the tremendous recoil. Judge, can I share a quick yeah. thought? I know you live uh, across the bay in Foley. Yeah. But if you can make it to McCoy's up I-65 uh, just west of the interstate on is it Spring Hill Avenue. Yes, yeah, Spring Hill Avenue. Uh, then uh, go to McCoy's because not only do they have these weapons, but they've got very knowledgeable people that will put them in your hands and let you feel them, look at them, and ask any question that comes to mind. And, of course, there's nothing to keep you from taking your 9mm carbine in the car. It's just not real concealable. So that's what I would look at. Can I, can I ask you another question? Yeah. Uh-huh. I tell you what, Robert, we're coming up on break. Can you hold on? Yeah, hold on for us. We'll be right back with more of Armed Alabama, 251-343-0106. Step up to the firing line. Armed Alabama is back. Questions, comments, and texts at 343-0106. We've got here is failure to communicate. Some men you just can't reach. So you get what we had here last week, which is the way he wants it. Well, he gets it. I don't like it. Any Any more more than than you, man. That's Cool Hand Luke, if you hadn't seen it for a while. This is Judge Rusty Johnston back. I'm not sure I mentioned it or not. Uh, Adam Strange, our co-host, this being a work day, had a meeting he just could not shake out of. Uh, so we're going to – we'll pick him up next week. He's also an NRA firearms instructor. Want to offer our condolences to the family of Mobile Police Officer Sean Tudor, who was killed last week in an apparent murder. Um, but we'll let the courts decide that. Um, I think a 19-year-old assailant was arrested. Interesting in Alabama, like a lot of states, if a, if a police officer is killed in the line of duty, uh, it's a capital offense. If a judge is killed in the line of duty, it's a capital offense. There are all these categories. If you kill two or more people at the same time, it's a capital offense. It, it gets pretty extreme there, but that's that's always sad uh, when that happens there. I want to thank my friend uh, and local attorney, Steve Moore. Steve uh, has been a friend of mine. We went to law school together, and he has a personal interest injury firm here in Mobile. It's called the Moore Law Firm. Personal injury means slip and falls, car accidents, products liability, etc. He's located on 8 North Dearborn Street uh, downtown, right about a block off the square. And uh, you can either go visit them on the web, www.moore, M-O-O-R-E, law firm, that's all one word, dash A-L dot com, or you can uh, call them there at the office at, uh, let's see, I've got it somewhere. Uh, well, I will get that in a minute because some reason <laughs> they, they're probably out to lunch right now. But uh, th- do give them a call. They have uh, they'll consult you about uh, your case and tell you whether they think you have a chance or not. And remember, no representation is made to the qu- that the quality of the legal services performed by this law firm is greater than the quality of legal services performed by other law firms. Um, also want to mention up in um uh huntsville yeah last week in huntsville we had a concealed carry ihop employee uh and when i first read it i thought uh, they were talking about waffle house but it's ihop he killed the attacker an attacker who shot him and his father there at the ihop uh so that's that was kind of interesting and uh, houston had a the craziest story i hope i've got it yeah, down here there was a home invasion in houston and uh there were four people who invaded this man's home and he he killed well Three of them are dead. He, he, I know he killed one directly and wounded a couple, but then there was a car accident, so I don't know, you know, whether the result was the car accident. But people talk about why do you need a magazine with 20 rounds or 15 rounds? Or why do you need an AR-15? Because of something like that. Four people coming in the house. And you, you, just, know, you just never know. Generally, police officers who should have better, I mean, they at least go out shooting more than most people, 
in a in shootout statistically they'll miss 80 percent of the time and those are the trained people yeah that's exactly right now Judge, i noticed you brought some books with you are yes. you planning to give those away yeah, later thank on you for reminding me the first giveaway we want to do is we we're going to do give... it now or are we going to do it after the bottom well, of the we, hour we'll throw out the first question is the uh, uh politically incorrect guide to the constitution by dr kevin gutzman we've given that away four people love it what's that title again it's the politically there's a whole series it's like the dummies politically incorrect guide to the u.s constitution okay and the the question is if you know the answer call us at 251-343-0106 is what was america's uh i'm sorry america what was the first constitution of the united states called had a different name it had a di- different name and you know we always talk about america but america is the united states of america have we got a call there yeah and uh, matt got, uh, was on line one and he got away from us so i encourage okay. him to call back if he can okay matt call back if you can and but, speak uh let's uh let's go talk uh, to carlotta is hey carlotta right? Hey, thank you so much for um, entertaining my question. Um, I'm sure you can answer it. Uh, I have very recently found out that Mississippi, I believe, just changed their law regarding second homes in Alabama. Um, I'm I'm sorry, I wrote it down. I'm reading it wrong. Sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, Okay. Your second home in Alabama law, is that, are you permitted the same sorts of, uh, privileges with with having uh, you know firearms to protect yourself. Yes. Or do you need a concealing and or do you need a concealing carry permit to secure and or transport between the two? Right. Uh, you don't need a concealed carry if your gun is unloaded, a pistol is unloaded, and uh, it is locked in a box inside your car or placed in the trunk of your car. So, I mean, you, you can do that. Uh, it's a lot easier to get a, you know, concealed carry, but, you know, you can do that. But secondly, on the rights of a homeowner, your home is basically wherever you're putting your head that night. That would apply to a hotel room. Rental uh, house. To, yeah, to, to any, you know, you've rented a house at the beach. Camper trailer. Uh, yeah, so it, it you still have the same right of self-defense, which, frankly, are not a lot different. There There's some weird things like if somebody's coming in to kidnap a child but you know you have it used to be in your house you had stand your ground you didn't have to retreat but you have stand your ground in the street now so there's not that big a difference but no it for practical purposes it's the same wherever you're there at night but the concealing carry is a much easier solution i i would but all it does is just let you carry it in the car you know, without doing the, you know, put, get, getting the, put in the trunk and lock it in a box. Right. Well, I'm not planning to do anything that would make officers want to stop me. But, you know, I mean, well, you never, you know. never know what's down the road and what, what you Listen, know. Listen, it, it's the happening. most efficient I mean, office in Mobile. It costs you 20 bucks a year, and it takes usually about 10 minutes. And you can buy it for five years. Okay. So I would do it. It's down at the sheriff's office, uh... Oh, I can't think of the street, but it says it's right, right up the interstate. Right down below Metro J. Yeah, St. Emanuel, probably. Yeah. Thank you for calling, Carlotta. Thank you. Take care. All right, let's go to line one and pick up Chris. Hey, Chris. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, and yourself? Pretty good. What's up? Uh, I have the answer. You have the answer to the question? Yes, sir. It's the Articles of Confederation. You got it. And I'm going to give you the fill in just a second. But, you know, a lot of people forget that. And it 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 was the first Constitution. And, you know, there's a lot of scholarship now. You can buy a book, The Framers Coup, that it was really snuck past everyone. The, the uh, Congress of the Articles of Confederation just authorized a convention to propose amendments to the Articles. Well, when they met in Philadelphia, the first thing they did is lock the doors, keep the press out, and <laughs> wrote a whole new constitution. Through those articles. Yeah, right and, uh, you know, they always say, what did we learn in school? The articles were terrible because of the, it caused the economic recession. You couldn't tr- – most of that's not true. <laughs> they just – it was the propaganda needed to pass it. But uh, I'm going to hand you off to Phil if that's all right, and he's going to get your address, and we'll just mail it to you. It's a good book. Yes, sir. All thank right, you. thank you so much, Phil. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening. All right, um, 
want to also thank and uh, Charlie did earlier. McCoy Outdoors is our major sponsor. They got uh, gun stuff, but fishing stuff. If you're interested in maybe got the primitive weapons, bow and arrows, that type thing, they can tell you about that. Got the best running shoe guy in town. You know, most stores now they don't fit your shoes anymore. You just, you know, try them out. But Boy, they got some mean looking. Uh, bows for, oh yeah for they, the were, they really do i've always been tempted but not not quite so and mccoy's is open monday through saturday uh nine to six and they're on uh it's called the spring hill i think it's spring hill plaza shopping center but they're on spring hill avenue just west of the i-65 overpass and give them a call or stop by there and tell them that you heard about them on Armed Alabama. Uh, remember our number here is 251-343-0106. You can call or text a message in, uh, a question or a message in to that address. Also, for all your hardware needs, go to the either the Spring Hill Ace Hardware Store or the Criola, Criola Ace Hardware Store or the Moffett Road Ace Hardware Store. They're great people. And they got lumber in Creole. Yeah, they got lumber in Creole. Absolutely. By, by the way, Judge, uh, for people who may be hearing this show for the very first time, I want to mention again that Armed Alabama is normally heard on T- Tuesday, Tuesday nights, nights at from seven, seven or to seven o five. Yeah, to seven to eight. And that's when it's normally heard, and that's when we'll be back next week. We, we interrupted by Auburn football, but it thought ba- we basketball. Thought, yeah, basketball. That's right. Thought it would give us a chance to kind of expose the show to people who don't normally listen. We talk about anything related, not just guns, to hardening your home, prevention of crime, things you can do to not become a victim of crime, personal safety, personal safety, the law, the whole gambit news uh so we're here to try to help you out and i want to thank buck allen too that intro song that you heard is from singer songwriter buck allen you can find him on facebook at buck allen a-l-l-e-n singer songwriter he's a great guy and he kind of does that did that anthem for us so he's a real patriot we're going to be back after a short break in a minute and i'm going to give you a new question you win a new book we'll be right back Alabama is back. Questions, comments, and texts at 343-0106. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you are looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Good luck. That is, I guess it's Prince Lamb Nielsen. Boy, what a and, dramatic uh, reading. Oh, I know. Uh, taken, as I recall the name. That, and then the second one wasn't uh, quite as good. I have a text message here that, uh, what is a good concealed carry round pistol for a one-armed guy? I've actually got an article on that. And if you have um, Facebook, I will post it. If you don't, uh, maybe what I'll do... I'm going to post it right now. Remember, our Facebook is, uh, get on Facebook, and you can just put in the search engine, Armed Alabama Radio, FM Talk 106.5, and I'm pasting it right now. And you're live right now on Facebook. Yeah, live right now. You can actually watch me paste it, and I'm going to hit the publish, and uh, we got it on there. But it goes into some things you might want to go into. Now, if you're on Facebook, give you all a treat, you see this red is actually a piece of steel looks like a small ping pong paddle right. without the handle it's it's broadly called a bianchi plate but what it's for is shooting steel now if i had a lot of money and was spend <laughs> i would get the plate rack 
where you shoot these and they knock over and then you push a button or pull a string and they come back up you can just buy these and put them on a board and have to walk up there but i've got that and i've now they got look like they could take a lot of punishment yeah and i've also got something called well generally called a texas wheel and it's it's kind of it looks like a texas star i'm sorry and it has these tight plates on the end and when you knock one off it causes an imbalance and it starts spinning and um you know me a lot of people have shot it then i had matt canovi down here last year and who is matt canovi matt canovi is kind of a mentor of mine he hosts a show like this in a shooting school in springfield missouri and uh he shot those so fast he shot the plates off so fast the star didn't have time to turn and it turns very smoothly but so he, <laughs> i've never and i, I would have been with a lot of people that were good at that but everybody thinks thinks it through too much pop one on this side pop one on the other side he just pop, 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 pop. <laughs> so that and, was, and his show is uh streaming live yeah, out of springfield it's spring, too, it? you can saturday listen to morning. that on saturday mornings do you and, do a regular segment with him uh i i have it for about two months i've taken a little time off but i'll get back again and it is called the gun show and uh, you can find it on uh springfield radio I'll, I'll get you the address in a minute but it's matt canovi he's a great guy if you're ever around there uh in springfield and springfield's gotten uh, pretty big too about the size of mobile except you didn't have kind of the suburbs that mobile had you know mobile's metro is probably about uh, four hundred thousand. yeah or it's, just, like. it's just north of branson yeah People yeah that's, that's exactly right i don't think they'd like to say that but yeah it really it really is just north probably 30 minutes from branson if that yeah about that yeah exactly and let it let me see you can of course you can get to his website at guess what www.mattcanovi.com m-a-t-t-c-a-n-o-v-i and uh you can see him there and he's got a lot of good videos and a lot of facts i tell you um one video he may still have up is he's showing the recoil of a i think it's a 20 gauge shotgun older woman's grandchild um bought it for her and boy she just couldn't use it so what he did is put her in a 22 22 rifle and she was much more comfortable with it and by the way the uh gun show is on uh 104.1 fm and it's ksgf and i can't believe i forgot that since uh, springfield missouri was hosting it when matt was out of the country but springfield missouri the gun show eight o'clock saturday mornings there's another thing that i wish we could mention or maybe we should since this is a daytime show it's kind of strange doing this and seeing sunlight outside the window but um um from time to time you and adam give classes yeah adam i'll just say adam is getting ready adam has a big volunteer job that's going to be ending this month i think uh-huh. so i hope it'll free up enough time so we can start doing that quarterly both he and i are not just nra farms instructors we've gone through matt canovi school he has a little different attitude and i think he's right and it's, one of y'all are law enforcement yeah, certified yeah matt um matt is adam. um adam is uh but canovi's course is called the real system you can look on his website he basically takes the position and he's right that most concealed carry holders if they're going to be in shooting it's going to be 10 to 12 feet or less and that's where it's going to take place and there's a system that's pretty easy it's kind of uh, a point and shoot but you know where you whip your gun out and you can it you fire and you're kind of backing up at the same time as opposed to pulling your pistol out aiming you got about three seconds yeah the winner usually uh is the gun fights over in three to four seconds and the winner fires two to four shots well now that's part of your course but you and adam also teach appropriate law too don't oh you? yeah yeah that's that's i think he thinks it's too much but i just don't like doing something you know half halfway it's about three hours of that is for instance where you can carry in alabama and if we have anybody there from mississippi uh, or florida where you can carry uh the questions like about cars uh you know do these signs that you see no guns allowed uh are they uh legal well anybody can put up anything they want but they're of no legal effect unless it's 
some place that the statute prescribes. And by the way, the easiest thing to do, if you uh, want to know something, and we're not on the air, go to uh, a website called Handgun Laws. And is that law, L-A-W, or laws? L-A-W, let me just, yeah, Handgun Law. Dot us. That's all one word, www.handgunlaw.us. Hit that, and then you can hit uh, Alabama. It'll show you the states we have a reciprocal agreement with. Which is most states. Which is well, the more states than, you want to go. Half. We don't with New York, New Jersey, District of Columbia. You know, some states. Is, Nobody has agreement with those folks. Yeah, they don't. They don't. The odd state we don't is South Carolina, and I used to kind of know the reason, um, but I can't recall what it is anymore. But, uh, but by reciprocal, that means those states would recognize, recognize the Alabama it. permit. But keep in mind, you have to comply with their laws. Right. Alabama, for instance, upon being stopped by a police officer, you don't have to identify you're a concealed carry holder. And my advice is, if your if your gun is on you in a holster or um, plainly visible telling uh but if it's you know in in a place you're not going to have to access during the traffic stop you don't have any you know business doing that uh, but some states require that so if you're in oh let's say kansas i'm just throwing that out and they require a concealed carry holder to announce to the police they have a pistol then you got to comply with their law and their laws on self-defense. And what and what is that website again? Because we have people listening www. right now in Florida and in Mississippi. Yeah, it's, it's great. www.handgunlaw, H-A-N-D-G-U-N-L-A-W, that's all one word, dot U-S. And it's a lot of stuff in there, and it gives you a lot of links if you're interested in gun rights and all of this stuff. And I'm going to put that link also on the Facebook page. And just so anybody can go to it that wants to, and uh, but it has, it normally downloads you a PDF of like your state if you ask about it. But uh, it's got a lot of good stuff in it, and um, like I say, it can't beat the price. It's free. <laughs> Judge, uh, you announced a little earlier, and we do have lines open at three four three zero one zero six if you want to join us, but. You announced earlier you've got a second book yeah, you want to give away. Yeah, we have a second away. book. And what, second what, what are you giving away this time? It's called The Last Siege. It's about the battle of the siege of Mobile, Alabama, by our local author, Paul Bruski. That was a great show, Oh, by yeah, the great way. show. And the question is, Confederate Memorial Day is April 26. Why is it on April 26? If you know the answer to that question, you win The Last Siege by Paul Bruski. Great book. It's been out a few months, not not very long, three or four months. Made a good Christmas gift for me and had a few extra for the show. So, And, and don't worry about where you live. If you're hearing this show, If you're hearing this show we'll in Alaska, you. you call us. or Even if it's in New Zealand. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, the Internet is everywhere. And, you know, it's odd. Most of the time, people either stumble on us or... That are out of state or it's residents that are traveling. That's how I found. I like these type shows. I found Matt Canovey probably ten years ago. Uh, so that that was kind of interesting. And he was on Sunday then, but he has thousands of shows. And we've got a couple of hundred shows on our website. We need to kind of. Uh, I'm going through getting a new uh, webmaster, so we've probably got two months behind, but. Still, you got a couple of hundred shows that you can download and play in your car, wherever you want to play it, and um, it's, it's pretty interesting to do that. If any of you, sh- uh, I've mentioned this before, shoot steel. That's what we're talking about here with the steel plates. Give us a call and tell me about your experience. I went to a shooting range at the George Bush, I guess it was Senior Park in Houston, Texas. It's a big park. And they have a kind of a, a independent group that subs out the shooting range, but they had steel shooting at the range, which is pretty unusual because a lot of people think it's dangerous. And if well, everything's dangerous, obviously uh, going to gun range is dangerous. But I was surprised they had that. It, it was kind of interesting. Uh, Randy is there. We only got about forty seconds. Randy, can you? That's no, pretty. Let's go ahead and put him. Okay. On. Hey, Randy. What's up? Hey, now. What's going on? I've got, we've moved to Mississippi about four or five years ago. Yep. And me and my son and my wife, we've been Alabama licensed for our guns for a long time. Yep. And do I need to 
tell them my new address and still you renew my gun permit over there? Do I have to go through a different process? To well, do that? you do. You need to. You're really supposed to do it, and, and you need to do it because if something happened. Uh, they're going to say you should have had a Mississippi concealed carry permit. You're under arrest. Uh, it's yes. when you establish residence, certain number, usually you know, thirty to ninety days. Uh, but they have they have a regular permit and they have an enhanced permit. I tell you what, just go to that handgunlaw.us and hit Mississippi, and it'll tell you where you go. You have to. It costs you a lot more money because you got to submit fingerprints. But yeah, you need to do that. It's not that complicated, right. but you need to do it. And you have to have a license to uh, carry a stun gun also. So but, you, but you only have to do that if you become a resident. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Our reciprocal permit works, but if you become a resident, then you need to go ahead and get one from there. Kind of like yeah. your car tag. During that time frame, we've done got all of our car tags, license, and Yeah. Yeah. So now's the time to do it. Everything has changed. So. Yeah. Cost hey, a fortune, though. Where in Mississippi are you? Loosedale. Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of listeners over there, but good. Thank you for calling and check out that site, www.handgunlaw.us. It'll give you all the offices you need to contact and what you need to do. All right, appreciate all right. it. Thank you. Appreciate We're going to run to a break right now on Armed Alabama on FM Talk 1065. We'll be back in two or three minutes. Step up to the firing line. Armed Alabama is back. Questions, comments, and texts at 343-0106. Survival kit contents check. In them you will find 145 caliber automatic, two boxes of ammunition, four days concentrated emergency ration, one drug issue containing antibiotics, morphine, vitamin pills, pep pills, sleeping pills, tranquilizer pills. One miniature combination Russian phrase book and Bible. $100 in rubles. $100 in gold. Nine packs of chewing gum. One issue of prophylactics. Three lipsticks. Three pair of nylon stockings. Shoot, a fella could have a pretty good time in Vegas with all that stuff, right, Charlie? That's right. <laughs> Let me briefly say again thanks to Steve Moore and his law firm, personal injury law firm, 8 North Dearborn Street. His number is 251-445-7602. He's a great guy. Remember, no representation is made that the quality of the legal services to be performed is greater than the quality of legal service performed by other attorneys. And let's take Dennis over in Foley. Hey, Dennis. Hello. How things in Foley? Oh, windy. <laughs> What's up? Uh, well, y'all were asking people to call in that had experience shooting steel. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, had quite a bit. When we first moved to uh, Orange Beach back in 2004, we could actually set up the steel at the uh, police range and shoot that. Of course, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And for those who have never done it, if you ever get a chance to shoot a dueling tree, oh, that's, that's a blast. I got a dueling tree. I got a, actually, they call it a whirly gig. But All right, what is, a star. Du- what is a dueling tree? The dueling tree? tree is what I was telling you all earlier, and correct me if, if my idea is wrong, yours, Dennis. It's basically a steel plate on, a, I guess, a pivot on a pole, steel mm-hmm. pole, and you hit it and it knocks it to the other side. And yeah. uh, it's, I've been, the reason I'm into this now, I've been repainting all of my steel. And, you know, I've gone overboard, like sanding it down to the bare metal. But, you mm-hmm. know, it's, I hadn't done that in three or four years. And it's just gotten all rusted. But it's fun because you get a feedback. You know, it's not just shooting a paper target. And there well, are, you know, just tons of them. Yeah, paper target, you don't hear the bullet hit. You don't. Hey, you Dennis, don't. do you ever get shot back at with a ricochet or anything? I've, I've never had any issues with it. And most of the issues, with, with from what I read and from what I've seen, most of the issues come if you're shooting soft steel rather than the AR-500 steel. You got it. That's what I was soft telling them earlier. It back at you. That's what I was telling them earlier. That I've got the AR-500 here, and it still needs to be, especially if it's a... Like, I've got a uh, one of the targets that looks like the FBI, you know, target, the milk bottle. Right. But I've got it on, you know, whatever it is, a 20% slant. So when you hit it, it pops it to the ground. So got to right. be a little more careful. Dennis, yeah. thank you very much. Appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. See you. And let's go to uh, Lou, Lou in Mobile. Lou, what's up? Hey, hey, hey Charlie. Uh, hey, Rusty. Uh, hey. Yeah, just... Uh, 
used to live in Frederick, Maryland, up by Frederick, Maryland, and belonged to a pistol club, and we shot a lot of steel, but a lot of bowling pins also. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, you, it's harder to find bowling pins than it used to, and now they're ma- not made out of wood. But, uh, yeah, it's fun because it gives you a feedback, you know? Yeah. You shoot at a paper target. You just, you know, what's interesting, try to find a silhouette target at, let me just, th- you know, one of the big box stores that sells lots of pistols. You won't find one. It's almost like, you know, they want to sell the weapon to defend yourself, but they don't want to really admit people are going to use it to shoot folks. And you need to practice with a silhouette, I think. But, you know, it's, but just if I'm wrong, y'all let me know. But uh, that's to my knowledge. You don't know the answer to my question, do you? Uh, no, uh, but we used to shoot different kind of steel silhouettes, uh, steel yep. silhouettes, and uh, we would have the uh, armed hostage uh, silhouette. Yes, we had yes. to shoot, shoot the one behind. Yep. Uh, the, it kind of pivots back and forth, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's and, fun. Uh, and a lot of the uh, police shoots we used to take and uh, actually put a car on the range and you sit in the car and you start your timing getting out of the car and getting into the shooting position behind the door. And listen, and, that's and a great them. practice because, you know, people have guns for their cars, but they don't know how to draw. They don't know how to fire, you know, either at the side windows. And I don't mean, shoot through the windshield. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but, you know, it, it just takes a little practice. And one thing, uh, and Matt Canovey the only one I've seen that's done it right. I was the one in the video, but... You know, if you keep, uh, let's say your right hand dominant, you keep your left hand on the wheel, and your right hand, of course, is holding your pistol, and you put it on top, kind of at your forearm, and aim it out the window, and you so you can keep steering your car, which exactly. is pretty important. <laughs> hey, by the way, Lou, uh, good to hear from a former Marylander. When I was a boy, we lived in St. Mary's County between Leonardtown and Mechanicsville. Went to Margaret oh, yeah. Brent High School up there. Oh, I, lo- I love Maryland. It's, it's kind of gone <laughs> socialist, though. <laughs> but yeah, their, their their gun laws were really wacky. Uh, you had to carry the gun in the uh, in the ammunition separated in lock boxes, and it was just a pain. Oh, that's what I was telling you. One of these cases going to the Supreme Court is their assault weapons ban, just absolute ban on anything you know that looks evil, <laughs> and that's so dumb, you know. <laughs> really dumb but uh, yeah it is and uh, we used to have a lot of the secret service that uh, used to uh, protect Kent David and they were belonged to our club and uh, we would have some interesting uh, interesting meets uh, uh, and they would have they would uh, teach us different things that they learned in their profession right um, so it, it was a lot of fun to to, uh, to be in that kind of a pistol club. Oh and, yeah, I bet, I bet. And most most of it was uh, big caliber shooting, you know, forty uh, fives, and uh, and uh, shooting uh, shooting bowling pins. Uh, you, you really need a comp barrel. <laughs> yeah, you really do. And, <laughs> and uh, what he's talking about is you need you don't need a two inch barrel. You need you know a four four and a half inch barrel because uh, your accuracy is so much better. Yeah, and the comp barrel, the comp barrel has those uh, slits cut right, in the top. Right, on the side. So it's like a the... compensator you screw on, but it's made into the barrel. It's almost like gills. Got yeah. got to run. Appreciate it. Give us a call next week. All right, Lou? Okay, see you, Thank Charlie. You. Okay, take care. take care, buddy. And um, um, we only have about a minute. So I guess you're going to have to save that book for another We're going to save it for next week. The answer to that question was April 26 was the day a distant relative of mine, General Joe Johnston, surrendered in North Carolina at Bennett's place, surrendered to William Tecumseh Sherman. The first agreement they made on April 18th was rejected because it was going to be a total surrender of all the Southern forces. As it was, he surrendered the largest army. It was all the forces in the Carolinas and Georgia and Florida, et cetera. But that was on April 26th, and that actually predated the Northern Memorial Day. Uh, and, Judge, Conf- I just want to tell you before we get away that uh, I've enjoyed being with you in the daytime. Yeah. But I'm also looking forward to next Tuesday night between 7 and 8 when this show yeah, don't normally forget it airs. And check us out on Facebook, too, or on the website, or here at the station's website, FM Talk 1065, for the Armed Alabama Show. We'll have Adam Strange with us next week, I promise you.